Hello, everybody, the Shotgun is fantastic. We're playing for duty. Welcome you back to more Splatoon. Last time, we um, obviously got shown the tutorial of how to move our character, how to shoot ink, how to turn into a squid, how to climb walls, how to jump and do everything else. And we also discovered Octo Valley with our very first mission, Octo Trooper Hideout, which we succeedingly done so and got ourselves a sunken scroll. This time, we're going to be doing level 2, which is located right over here, which is Layer of the Octoballs. Splat your way to the top. And how fitting that the very first enemy we see in the Layer of the Octoballs is an Octo Bomber. Those Octo Bombers. If they get a good line of sight of you, they will fuse up their, well, they will light up their fuse, come charging in at you, and then explode when they get really, really close to your position. And that, though, you saw there, it was known as an ink balloon. Shoot it with one bullet, it will automatically explode a whole variety of ink with your colour. It will definitely help you in Octo Valley, but don't rely on it too much because believe me, um, well, you kind of get the gist. So there's another Octo Bomber there. So we just climb on up, shoot that bal uh, balloon again, climb on up, get those eggs. And take the launch pad. And now here are where the octoballs sit. If you shoot them, they'll act like a pinball. But they'll mainly just roll around all over the place to try and attack you. If they go into your ink, they will slow down indefinitely, but they will not kill them. You have to physically shoot them to kill them. Whoa! Good God! Okay, I wasn't expecting him to do that. I thought the bomb was immediately going to blow him up and kill him, not blow him straight towards me. And we've now got this guy. This is known as a squeegee. You cannot kill them. You can potentially stun them for a little bit, but if they see your ink... He'll decide, oh no, this wall needs to stay clean, I'll just clean it up. Those enemies can be pretty annoying because, for starters, they don't actually hurt you. They're immune to your attacks and, well, you can just immediately say that they are annoying to deal with. By the way, if you drop down here, here's the sunken scroll for level 2. And we're going to have another Octo Ball over there, as you can pretty much see. I'm going to throw it up high. So he couldn't see me coming. Yeah, when it comes to battling enemies that um, are like story-based... Well, if you're actually battling people who are story-based enemies... I just love to troll them by hiding behind a wall and just kill them willy-nilly. And now we have got more Octoball. Oh, by the way, yeah. The Squeegees actually suck up not just your ink, but the Octarian's ink as well. And also, you can actually sit on top of the Squeegee just in case they were proving to be a little bit troublesome. But not too troublesome for you to actually have a little ride. So climb on up. Hey, I can see you. Oh wait, you got no eyes. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, so we go along here. Got us another checkpoint and oh boy. Uh, bye. Nice knowing you. Yeah, if you actually are able to, you can shoot an the ball over the edge. Providing that they don't roll off. Otherwise, they'll just be bouncing off the rim. And now for this area. We have 
Not one, not two, but three octoballs. Oh, wait, we're gonna just move them nuts. Oh, wait, they're dead. <laughs> no children for you today. <laughs> yeah, you cannot avoid a... You cannot avoid a... Uh, men's part joke. Whenever you see the word balls, you can easily tell that's what people are going to say. Hi. Obviously, those uh, Tenta Octo, octo Troopers were not even able to see uh, or shooting at him, but we obviously killed him. Okay, the Squeeze are going to deal with the ink down there. We're just going to be climbing up this way, grab the sapfish, and there we go. That is the end. Oh, dear me. Yeah, always nice to have a good stretch of the bones every now and then. Okay, so here's Sunken Squad number two. We Octarians dwell in a world deep underground. The individual caves in which we live are connected by a network of transport devices known as kettles. And in case you're wondering, no, our kettles in the real world do not hold the um, enemy base of Octarians. <laughs> well, so that's how our home works. Now, that's actually something kind of different. In American version, um, that final line doesn't say, wow, so that's how our home works. It instead says, wow, learn something new every day. Now then, um, I'm obviously going to show a little something else while we're here. I was actually meant to do this last time. You see, all the, you see the fish eggs in the very top left, so right hand corner? If you press power up, you can see we have this. We got our main weapon, Hero Shot. Um, which is exactly the same weapon as another weapon that we've actually not been introduced to in the Splatoon franchise. And by the way, if you want like a base tutorial of every single weapon with a sub and a special. You want to see Chuck and Conroy's um, Let's Play of Splatoon. If you actually want to just watch the weapon bio, I will put in the description below in this video exactly what the video is that just shows a montage of all the bios in um, the weapons that Sugar Conroy talks about. I'm not really the greatest in the world at explaining certain stuff, like how Pokemon are in competitive battles, why they're so good in their base stats, what moves they are able to learn that's able to help cover their weaknesses or whatever. Splatoon, when I'm talking about weapons, and all kinds of stuff, really. There are a lot of hidden secrets that were known to be in the game that we just decided to be scrapped at the last second. I'm not able to mention them because as you can pretty much tell, I don't really know as much as Chuck and Conroy does. So anyway, we got the ink tank. This actually um, holds the capacity of ink that you shoot with your weapons. Splat Bombs has a blast radius which will increase, let's say, has a blast radius that instantly kills enemies, uh, but they can easily be dodged. The blast radius will be increased from times 1 to times 1.3 if you upgrade the splat bombs here. But we also have two others that we can get. Burst bombs explode as soon as they touch the ground or a foe or a wall or a ceiling. And seekers. They are bombs that travel along the ground, homing in on foes when they when they seek them. If they don't see them, then simple case, you don't get to kill them. So I'm going to like buy all them. And if you actually ever want to change your bomb types, just use the D-pad on your gamepad and you will change to either 
splat, bot, um, splat, blast, or seeker. Well, burst bomb, sorry. Now, I'm going to go back to Incopolisville quick because there's actually something else that I've been meaning to go over. And this is the only weapon bio I'm going to go over. If I press the plus menu to go straight to the equipment, you see that our character has been defaulted to be wearing the white headband, basic tee, and cream basics. And you notice that they have certain something, uh, certain something called abilities added onto them. I will go over exactly what these abilities do. But first of all, we got the weapon. This was the weapon that we was using when we was on our way to Incopolis Square. The Splattershot Junior. Um, it has not so great range. Not the best of all damage, but his fire rate is absolutely good. Usually people will say this is not really a good weapon, but honestly it is. The own, oh, and also, if you press Y, you can actually test out weapons whenever you want as a base of training. And I'll show you exactly how the weapon behaves. You see, it has a range of three line widths. The shots tend to scatter all over the place. And, yeah. You can do, from a further distance of... Five hits to kill an enemy. Or, get up close and do base four. But occasionally, you notice that the bullets are spreading around all over the place, meaning that they're not guaranteed to hit the foe all the time. And with a splat bomb, can do an instant death, but it does, it does a range of 30 damage if the explosion is nowhere near. And also, a little something else. You notice in the top right hand corner that we have a little something charging up based on the more turf that we paint? Well, this is known as a special ability. When we get the special ability, our hair just flares up for no apparent reason, and we can push the R stick button down to activate a special, which is Bubbler. For six seconds, you'll grant invis invincibility for you and your teammates if you run into your teammates while having the bubbler around you to protect yourself from enemies dealing damage to you with their ink. But they can potentially shoot your bubbler and shoot you backwards, maybe sending you into the drink, which is the squid's natural enemy habitat. And yeah, I know, squids obviously swim in water. So why do these squids die instantly when they touch it? Because they are not normal squids. They can turn into either squid form or human form. Now, in this trailer area, you can see we got some crash test dummies. We got this dummy that has no defense up. This one that has one defense up. This one that has two. And this one that has three. Uh, this one... Does four damage to kill. This one also does four, but you notice that this one, first shot, 28, 26.5, 25.4, 24.5. The more damage up you have, the less damage you will take. And let's see if I can score a basket. Yay! I scored a basket! And I also killed an enemy. How fitting. <laughs> So yeah, that's all I got to show for the Splatterjar Jr. And yeah, you can tell that Oh god, um It can prove to be pretty good, but like I said, I'm not the best in the world when it comes to explaining certain gear. If you want that, I again I will show you in the description down below. Now, I know something else. If um, oh, um, there's a certain button, is it? Which one is it? I don't, I don't know. Oh, there you go. Okay. On um, my game pads. This is the map of the hob lobby. You see, you've got map, equipment, stages, and option. If I go to, um, equipment... It will just show you that, 
but there's actually known something known as an ability guide. I'm going to take my iPad off its dock and I'm going to record my gamepad screen right now. Now these are all the abilities that you actually notice with the gear that I'm showing you on my TV screen right there. Um, I'm going to mention to you exactly what each of these do. Starting off, um, well, hang on, sorry, I'm not used to doing this. So we got first of all damage up. It increases the attack of all your main sub and special weapons. This ability is absolutely brilliant because um, it raises damage ratio done with your weapon to enemies. Not by much, but it does it by a decent amount. We've also got defense up, which is similar to damage up, but instead of dealing more damage, you you actually take less damage. Like, somebody shoots you with a bullet, like those dummies that I showed you earlier on, where it went from 28 down to 26.5, down to 25.4, down to 24.7 or whatever. That's what that does. We also have Ink Saver Main and Ink Saver Sub. These abilities actually uh, produce... Uh, so these abilities allow you to use less ink with your weapons of your main or your sub. We've also got this one here, Ink Recovery Up. It allows you to recover your ink a lot quicker than you would normally anticipate. We've also got these ones here, Run Speed Up, which lets you run faster. Swim Speed Up, which lets you swim faster. Special Charge Up, which... Um, as you notice when you saw me charging up my special when I was shooting the turf, it will actually decrease the time required to charge it up. So like say, uh, you require 5 seconds to charge up your special, it actually decreases to 3. It doesn't actually require seconds, it just basically requires the amount of turf. We've also got special division up, which allows you to use your special weapons longer than anticipated. We've also got kick Quick Respawn. Now, when you play a game online, every single time you die, you're dead for three seconds, but then you get respawned after the three seconds has already happened. we got a Special Saver, which kind of bases on, like, your Special Depletion. You notice that the Special Junior has Special Depletion Minimum. Say, Medium, sorry, not Minimum. Um, what that means is, when you die... If you charged up your special but not yet used it, the special saver will actually save a bit of the depletion that was normally made by you getting killed. So like, every time you get killed, the special depletion will actually deplete the amount of ink you charged inside your special in order to use it. So like, say for medium, it goes from full down to half. But if you have a special saver, it then becomes from a half to, like, say, a third. Okay? We've also got quick super jump. Now, remember when we did the super jump into Incopolis Square? You can actually do that inside the online matches when you tap one of your teammates. And it does actually leave a... Um, silhouette to your opponents telling them exactly that you are super jumping to your teammates location and they can just pretty much stand there and wait to shoot bullets at you and then kill you once you land. I don't like that. We've also got Bomb Ranger which allows you to throw sub weapons further than anticipated. Opening Gambit which actually boosts um your speed in both inkling and squid form for the first 30 seconds of the match. Uh, last dish effort, which is the same thing, but in the last 30 seconds of the match. Tenacity. Special gauge refills automatically if your team has fewer active players than the enemy. Which actually can be pretty unique, but at the same time kind of not. We have comeback. After respawning, some of your abilities are boosted for a short time. Cold-Blooded, 
which shortens the effect of attacks that let enemies track your position, such as something that we've not been introduced to yet, point sensors. Ninja Squid allows you to swim in your ink really, really, really fast without making um, a blob of ink just splash all over the place to allow your enemies to see exactly where you are running to. Instead, the Ninja Squid would just be like, okay, I'm in the ink, I'm swinging as fast as I can, I'm not leaving any splashes so my teammates cannot see where I am, nor can my enemy. We've also got Recon. You can see the opposing team on the map while standing on the spawning point. But once you leave the spawn point, then yeah, your recon will no longer be useful. We also have Bomb Sniffer, which allows you to sense traps or bombs nearby that's been set by your opponent. Ink Resist Up, which is damage and movement penalty occurred in the game, but it actually depletes the number of it. Now, remember when I stepped in the enemy ink in the very first episode of the demonstration? If you have ink resist up, um, you will move a little bit quicker in enemy ink, but not by much. And finally, stealth jump, which is actually way better than quick super jump. It will allow you to do a super jump without telling your enemies exactly where you're jumping to. Okay? So that is every, that's, that's every single ability. Now... Uh, with options, you see this. Camera sensitivity. You can change the sensitivity to however you want. So, like, say, if the camera is too sensitive and it's not moving too much, you can move the minus one all the way up to around one of these plus numbers. But if it's, like, too hard with a plus, you can move it down to the minus. It's entirely up to you. Okay. So, that's basically... Everything that I can say with Splatoon as it is right now. I can't really mention anything else unless I reach a certain level. And I'm going to be going over that at a different time, okay? So next time on Splatoon, we'll be doing level 3 of Octo Valley. See you guys then.